just found out my uncle's taking Viagra. My aunt's taking it hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid drag studio. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, 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 Twitter,
life is a subject. You know, character is a subject that is possible to do in, in cinema and, it's, and you, can, you can get work in cinema by reflecting life. I was very naive, but still, you know, that gave me a direction that, you know, I can do this. Uh, but that is what I felt about yeah. Irfan, that he, he's got his craft down. And I directed him uh, in, in this terrible film I made, and I found him to be the most receptive, easiest to direct actor. I just had to tell him a thing once and he would not only deliver, he would go beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, That's I've seldom seen that. <clears throat> a lot of actors will do what you right. ask you them to, to do. And you have to fight they won't give out their own color. Right. Uh, Irfan did that. It's the most mm -hmm. I, 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 actor. I don't right. think that, I don't think I've seen a weak performance by Irfan, except perhaps in, in parts of the life of Pi, where he tried to do an, a Canadian accent or something which didn't work. But apart from that, interesting. I, I don't think I've seen a weak performance by Irfan. So, frustration right. point was later when, when you know, when I was just waiting, 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 and getting bored with acting. I was bored with acting because you, you are repeating in, 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 in television. You are repeating the same conflict again and again. And if you want to experiment, if you want to do some changes, or if you want to take time, if you want to behave in television, they don't allow because it takes time. Or Time is money for them. They say, line bolo, jaldi, line bolo, line bolo, line bolo. We have a memoir and then one day you talk about that first experience of discovering what it was like to be on stage, to be an actor, and you described it as being submerged in lukewarm rose water, which is just the most beautiful line ever. <laughs> um, how do you nurture this? this experience, this high, you know, this kind of feeling of being submerged in this rose water. How have you nurtured it for more than five decades? By trying to understand more about the nature of the stage. There was a time when I believed in uh, 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 realism on stage. I believed that when you perform a play, the viewers must feel this is actually happening. Everything must, must reflect uh, life, it must reflect, it must be a slice of life. But I found that any of those kind of plays that I watched, which were, which were set in a kitchen or which were set in a, a bedroom or, you know, um, a, a, a massage parlor or something like that, <coughs> never, never really rang as true as I felt they should. Even the ones I saw abroad, because the audience never forgets they're in the theater, you know. They can see the lights, they can see the curtains flapping, they can see through the wings and see people moving around backstage. They can see the proscenium. They, they have 200 people sitting around them. So how can, they, how can they forget that? You can't expect them to. So it's futile to try to persuade them that this is actually happening. It's better to remind them that you're watching a play. Good evening. We are actors, you are an audience, welcome, I hope you're comfortable. We're going to tell you a story about this and that, and you begin the play. So you, you, you demolish this so-called fourth wall. <clears throat> There's no fourth wall. The audience and actor are one. And that is why I like to, before the play begins, the actors to enter onto stage or, or be around on the stage and chatting with the members of the audience. Wow. I don't believe in creating this sense of mystery about the play. There's so much silence and some heavy music is playing and there's violet lights and the audience sits in this, you know, oh, what the hell are we going to see kind of mood. I hate that. Uh, the audience must come there in a cheerful, receptive frame of mind. And, uh, and, 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 and the play should not destroy that. The actors must stand flexible. And that is the philosophy with which I now work in the theatre because to me, it's a means of contact with people. I have a slight problem with people. I don't know why it would take too long to talk about that, but <laughs> I'm not very comfortable with, with strangers and, and so on. I find it difficult to start a conversation. On stage, I can get through to 200 people at Kitfi Theatre, 1,000 people at the Tata Theatre, 500 people at the, you know, at, at, at the Deep Sauer Auditorium, and generally get through to them and, and, and know that being in contact with them. To me, that's very, very precious, much more precious than the applause uh, and, uh, and people coming backstage and telling me that they liked it. And so uh, all these things are, are good. But to me, the act itself 
has, has a certain amount of uh, uh, holiness in it. That's the, that's the only word I can use. I, I don't like to use words like that in connection with acting. There's nothing metaphysical about acting. <laughs> it's all hard work, it's labor. But there is a sense of uh, the sacred uh, at times. That's what it is. And that's why I enjoy the theater the more. Uh, because it's a living thing. Mm -hmm. You can, we've been doing the same play, uh, several of the same plays for over 20, 30 years now. God, we've been doing it for 40 years. You can, you can keep finding things in great writing. Unlike a film where you've done it once, it's locked and it will be seen for eternity. Uh, terrifies me. My film will be seen a hundred years later. <laughs> and people will say, ah, what a little rubbish. Uh, my only struggle was uh, to sustain my, my, my inspiration. Because there was nothing around. In Delhi at least you have cinema, you have theatre, there was so many things to get inspired. And that time I realized that it's not my inner call to be an actor. It's a, it's a, it's a cultivated desire mm. Mm. to become an actor. Uh, and that's why I had, to, I had to keep my inspiration going. So the first thing I did from my first earning, I bought a VCR. Mm. <laughs> And, and then I started watching, uh, you know, to, to, to keep myself, you know, just to, just to engage or, 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 uh, or not to get bored by my own profession. <laughs> that was my struggle. It was a long struggle. <laughs> no, but what, 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 what I'm really interested to know is, you uh, know, you were getting thoughts like the sidekick and so on. Have you ever thought that I'm going to sit Failure to nahi hai nasib mein. Did these thoughts ever occur? Uh, I think I was a man. There was no other, other way to survive. Mm. Uh, people suggested me when I, when I, when I told them my well wishes, mm. uh, when, I, when I disclosed my, my, my inner plans that I'm, I want to go to drama school. Mm. They said, okay, you go to drama school. First, do your MA, take a job uh, as a teacher or something, and then you pursue your I said no way. <laughs> I was I was too too driven to learn the craft. Uh, if NSD wasn't there, if you wouldn't have been there, I don't think I would have uh, come here. So NSD was something you know which uh, I wanted to go and I was I, I I I was not eligible to go because I didn't do too many plays. Uh, so you know I just uh, you know failed you know stupid. I did a, a serious play like Udbhav Saramshar. Mm. The first, I, I got a role of that kid, Kulkarni's uh, son. Acha. Professor's son. Not the main... No, no, no. I was too young. I was too... So, my only concern at that time was, I used to think, that if you play Nasir Sahib, then what will you say? My performance is not me. The only thought which I used to carry, Nasir Sahib, if you see my performance, then what will you say? I used to think like that. Thank you, Shreya. Thank you, Shreya. There was a lot in there. Mm -hmm. There was a lot. And also, I love how Irfan says, I wanted to learn the craft when he is the craft. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, think he had to learn anything. No, and what I find intriguing, and it's a really great lesson, I am probably going to add to the things when I'm teaching about acting. He said something deeply important and revelatory that for him, it was not a calling, it was this, this compulsion for him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the reasons he's so effortless and so good is because um, one of the most important lessons an actor can have and this is going to sound strange at first is, is stop caring stop caring what people think stop caring about what your career is going to be stop caring about whether you're going to be liked and just focus on the work he was focused on the work I think that's why he could be so effortless. He still cared, obviously. He just said, what would Nasiruddin think of this? You know, yeah. uh, and he was wanting to always get better. But when it came down to the actual work itself, it wasn't, my destiny must be fulfilled. It was, I've got to do this work and I don't want to be bored. And then when I get the work, the only thing that matters is that I execute the work. Everything mm -hmm. else, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if I'm likable. I just want to be in the moment. 
Yeah, I think that's an important thing for any yeah. actor to learn if they want to be considered a great actor mm -hmm. in terms of the craft. Yeah, uh, and not just a, a star or something like exactly. that. Exactly, that has a massive career, which is great. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with that, but it, uh, obviously. These two gentlemen, especially, were, I think, very focused. And it was very interesting to hear Nasseridin talk about his views on on theater. Very, very I've, interesting. I've never heard anybody say that. Before. I have never heard any actor talk about theater like that. Yeah, and it's so interesting because there's definitely stuff that you're like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and obviously, I would love to talk about it with them a lot more because that's that's a subject that you can get deep into. Yeah, and it's a definite particular style of theatrical performance that I would love to go watch. I'd love to be involved in. It is not my... I'm a avid proponent and pounding the table of the stuff he hates in mm -hmm. theater. I love creating the ambiance before they're there. I don't think an actor should see the audience before the show. Mm. But would I love to be working with somebody? I was in a theater group a long time ago called Trinity. And it was a, mm -hmm. a workspace where the work of what the troupe was doing was just put on display. And oftentimes that fourth wall was broken, sometimes it wasn't. So mm -hmm. all of that experimental aspect to it and the inner relationship as well as the de um, um, mythological making of it, I do love that aspect mm -hmm. and I find that to be very groundbreaking and a really unique way to go about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very seldom have I heard people yeah. who say that's they that they hate the other. Yeah. I've never heard an actor say they hate the other version. Yeah, he's been yeah. doing it a long time. Sure so has. he knows what he likes. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> sure does. I would love to see him in a play. Oh I would love oh, to see him in a play. That was like when we got to see Al Pacino in a play. It's yeah. Like, that's like a, a once in a lifetime kind of thing I want to, to see, see Meryl Streep Meryl Streep in a play yeah. yeah absolutely so uh, let us know what's the next Nasser and Irfan film of course yes. uh, that we should watch uh, next down below